El Barrio, the evolution of Dallas's Little Mexico. The implementation of urban redevelopment projects in Little Mexico reveals the historical significance of urban renewal. Many affordable areas within larger cities become home to immigrants. This is until those areas become more desirable, pushing out the people and cultures that have formed over decades. Mexican Americans in Dallas are responsible for much of the growth in the city, and the strong cultural influence that is left is integral to Dallas today. Before Little Mexico was Little Mexico, it was Frogtown, named for all of the frogs who were found in the area. Frogtown was home to many of the Eastern European Jews who moved to Dallas years before. Through the late 1800s and up until the early 1900s, the area was heavily Jewish. This was until they were able to move their way up into middle class and nicer northern parts of the city. The area was still very compact and not considered a very desirable place to live. This made it easier for Mexicans moving to Dallas to inhabit the area. The already established Frogtown quickly became home to Mexicans who immigrated to Texas during the Mexican Revolution and evolved into a new Jewish Mexican American culture. Many Mexican children in the beginnings of Little Mexico even recalled speaking Yiddish before learning English. The Mexican Revolution was the initial cause of many Mexicans moving into the United States. The revolution spanned throughout the 1910s. This is when we begin to see Mexicans migrate into what would soon be known as Little Mexico. Dallas was meant to act as a stop in order to make money before returning home. But as more families situated in the area, it was harder to pick up and leave. In the next 10 years, many establishments popped up into the area, making Frogtown officially transform into what was known as Little Mexico, or El Barrio. Turney and Payne, the location pinpointed in the map shown, was the center of the growing community. This map is from 1919, before Little Mexico was fully established. Before Pike Park was renamed, it was Summit Park, seen to the left of Turney and Payne. The park was owned by James Turney and proved to be beneficial toward the growing community. Today, Turney Avenue is named Harry Hines Boulevard, one of the major roads in downtown Dallas. Bounded by McKinney Avenue to the east and the Missouri-Kansas-Texas Railroad to the west, Little Mexico expanded north to Maple Avenue. The area now encompasses the arts and historic West End districts in downtown Dallas. Pike Park, once Summit Park, was the closest and most important community center within Little Mexico and became home to many of the traditions and events for the Mexican community. Among these celebrations were the 4th of July, in celebration of America's independence, and Fiestas Patrias, the celebration of Mexico's independence, culture, and national pride. By 1920, the population in Little Mexico was thought to be around 10,000 people. This increased to 15,000 by 1930. This map shows how densely the Mexican-American population was in 1960. While there were people outside the barriers of Little Mexico, the population was much denser within the lines than outside.
This map of the Hispanic population in 2020 shows how much the population has dispersed throughout the years. While this is due to fewer restrictions within the city and more available housing, it is also the result of urban renewal in downtown Dallas and gentrification that has pushed many lower income families away from their homes in downtown. Agricultural work was a large part of the economy in Dallas in the 1930s. While these jobs were available and needed, they didn't pay well. As an alternative, many residents found employment in the service industry. They found jobs as cooks and waiters at large hotels. Not long after, many began to open up their own cafes, bakeries, and restaurants. In 1959, the city made the decision to build the Dallas North Tollway along the Cotton Belt Railroad. This would run north out of downtown, disrupting the existing neighborhoods, including Little Mexico. Residents of the area were forced to sell their homes and offered an average of $10,000 for their home. Those who stayed behind would find themselves in part of a town that no longer resembled Little Mexico or the barrio that was once there. The re-establishment of Turney Avenue into Harry Hines Boulevard was the beginning of the end for Little Mexico. The widening and paving of the road was the first sign of demolition. What was meant as a way to improve the lives of those in the area soon escalated into the removal of the community. Throughout the 1950s and into the 1980s, Dallas saw immense growth. It was through eminent domain that the city was allowed to take over the land and homes of families living in the area. It was in the interest of the growth and fluidity of the city that they were able to split the city into the neighborhood chunks that we know today. All of this was in the interest of economic growth. In 2019, the last remaining home in Little Mexico was torn down. This was the home of Charlie Viasana, the man who owned the food store and the last living business owner from the community. The home stood on Harry Hines, the now major road that was once vital to Little Mexico.